Timothy Egan, he's an op-ed columnist for the New York Times. Timothy, you wrote this very, um, I would say, provocative column that was in the Times this weekend, an op-ed uh, in the New York Times. You said the president should apologize for slavery, and you said the first black man to live in the White House, long hesitant about doing anything bold on the color divide, could make one of the most simple and dramatic moves of his presidency. Apologize for the land of the free being, at one time, the largest shareholding nation on earth, slaveholding nation on earth. So why now? Why should, why President Obama? Well, you know, it, we're having this awful week, this horrible tragedy, and we're also having going through a lot of self-reflection right now. And at the root of a lot of this thing, a lot of the problems we've had is this America's original sin, which was slavery. As you mentioned, as I wrote, we were the largest slaveholding nation on earth. We did make blacks three-fifths of a person in the Constitution. We did codify um, excuse me, the, 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 we did codify racism into the Constitution in many ways. And I just think it could be so redemptive and so powerful and so moving, you wouldn't have any hassle from Congress. There'd be pushback from people, of course. But for a man who's the leader of the, what was once the largest slaveholding nation on earth to say, I apologize for what we did in America's original sin. Mm -hmm. Other nations have done it. The Vatican has done it. Um, people even, long past the time of... Yeah, and ahead, even sorry. Congress has done it here. Congress did it in 2009, but there was a caveat, as you point out uh, in your op-ed, that there would be no reparations with it. So my question to Joe Madison Correct. Is, is, do you think, Joe, that this should fall on President Obama, the first African-American president? Hell no. Uh, <laughs> and, and let me make something very clear. There is no way that the first African-American president uh, or that the first African-American president should uh, be the first president of the United States of America to apologize for an institution that was based on white supremacy. That should be the next white president of the United States. Why does it matter, Joe? Who's oh, the president? Because, because it was based on white supremacy. Why should an African-American president or a non-president apologize for the institution of white supremacy. Let me give you this scenario. The first African-American president, no other white president would do it. You don't know if a white president behind him will do it. To have a country that was built on r slavery and have the first, you don't think that would be symbolic to say, hey, guess what? You won't apologize? Well, there, we got a black president in there and he's going to apologize. Once again, that this is not an institution that was created by an African American. I mean, if you want to talk about being really heartfelt, then it should come from those individuals whose heritage mm -hmm. uh, benefited from this. This is absolutely the most absurd thing that, that I have, have ever heard. And, 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 know, and, and let me say this, let, let, it's I, not going to happen. All right, Tim, go ahead. Yeah, it's an institution that was that you know he is. It's, it doesn't have so much to do with color as it has to do with he is the commander in chief of this nation that has this sin in behind it, and great institutions are not afraid of apologizing for the past. When Prime Minister Tony Blair apologized to the Irish in 1997 for a famine that killed a million Irish people, it started something. It started a healing process. It started some new scholarship. A lot of people finally thought, my God, they admitted their crime. It doesn't have to do with the president's skin. I think president's skin color makes it even more powerful. Mm -hmm. Now, you could have well, the other four you just living presidents. You could have the other four. Let me finish it. You could have the other four living presidents join him. I was going to say, you could have the other four living presidents join him in this thing. But he's, he's apologizing as the president of a nation that did this original sin in the United States. Yeah, yeah, of which course he did didn't it. have anything to do with it. Which you just Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, well and even in your op-ed piece, you point out the issue of race. You just contradicted yourself. On one hand, you say it has nothing to do with race. Then you turn right around and say it does have. I have never heard. No, I well, just. Wait a minute. There's, Let there's me finish. An added I've power. never heard the argument okay. that slavery had nothing to do with race. You've got yeah. to be kidding let him, me. Let him, let him respond. Go ahead. No, no, I, I did. I 
didn't, Joe, I didn't say slavery has nothing to do with race. I'm saying he's in his position as president, he would be making this apology. It has the added power as the first African-American. And here's what he says, slavery. quote, he That's says, nothing about slavery. He says, as a son of a Kenyan father and a white mother who died more than a century after slavery ended, Barack Obama has little ancestral baggage on this issue, yet no man can make a stronger statement about America's original sin than the first African-American president. That's his quote. We'll continue this conversation. Right. Unfortunately, it's really interesting. Go Thanks. ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, and then sorry, Don. I was just going to say it is interesting that no president has ever apologized, that we are at the 150th anniversary point, and Congress has apologized, et cetera, but no president has ever done it. Um, and I think that the moment is ripe. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you, Joe Madison. We'll have you both Thank back. You. Coming up, angry young men connecting with hate groups online, from white supremacists to ISIS. What attracts them to ideology of mass murder?